Hi there, and welcome to this talk about the major uh, changes of the Fiery.NET SDK version 5. I'm Marco Fischer, I'm the product owner of the Fiery.NET SDK, and in this talk I will talk you through the all new features of the version 5. And we did a lot in this new version, new version 5. We completely restructured our code. But why did we do this? Um, before this new version, we had two Git repositories, namely the Fiery.NET SDK and the Fiery.NET Common. The common one was for file diagnostic code like serialization, parsing, fire path, and so on. And the SDK repo was for the fire version related code like fire resource, snapshot generation, and validation. The main repo, in the main repo, we had also four different branches um, for the four different fire versions like develop S2.3, develop R4, R4B, and R5. And you can see that also here in this diagram. And the left hand side, we have the file.net SDK, uh, which contains a few packages, namely hl 7 filerx and the Rx stands for S2.3, R4, R4B, and R5. And, that pack and those packages containing the file resource mainly, uh, like patient and observation and so on. And we also have uh, four flavors of the hl 7 file specification, and those packages were um, a functionality for validation, uh, snapshot generation, and, uh, and so on. Um, in the fire.net common, we had five packages, um, which were fire agnostic code. So uh, fire path, for example, fire uh, serialization, uh, support point poker containing actually um, uh, data types, and support and element model. We also had that there at that side. And those repositories, those two repositories, were con uh, connected uh, with each other with a GitHub module, and um, that we have here. And this old structure um, was a bit hard to maintain. Uh, for example, when we made a pull request for common, we also had to make a pull request for main. Because of this Git GitHub module, we have to update this Git module pointer. Um, releasing was also hard work. For example, we had to forward merge all the changes that we did in develop S2.3 to R4, and from R4 to R4B, and from R4B to 5, which cost a lot of time, and also on the other end, it also introduces uh, some er merge errors, which were hard to solve. Working with submodules for us was, in the beginning, a bit uh, a steep lear learning curve, I have to say, um, but we manage that now. But we see for our contributors, for people who also um, um, creating pull requests for us, that they have some problems with it uh, because it's not really common. And um, yeah, we have to change a lot of pull requests to, to in order to, to have it uh, correctly in our code. And we have a new structure. We have only one repository left, and that's the file.net SDK does not exist anymore. Well, it does exist, but only in archive mode. Also, we don't have any Git submodules anymore. We restructured the code a bit and we put it in a kind of a layered structure. For example, we have the base layer, which is actually the shared code for S2.3, R4, R4B, and R5. And in this code, we have in actually all the code that was in the common repository, like uh, the serialization, um, the base data types, base fire data types, and, and so on. Then we have the conformance layer. The conformance layer is actually code that's been shared with R4, R4B, and R5. And that consists of um, conformance resources, like uh, structure definition, element definition, value sets, and so on. Then we have a satellite layer, and that's actually the code where the fire resources are remaining um, existing, like um, the, the fire resources, the POCOs, and so on. That's specific code for a specific fire version. And the specification da data, that's containing only the specification zip. We took out the specification zip from um, the satellites and put them in a separate, separate package. Uh, there is no code in there, only the specification zip. And the specification zip contains of the fire um, conformance resources for that specific version. The 
The other two bullets uh, I will talk later in the next slide. So let's have a look how that looks like in the diagram, because that gives us a better overview. You see that we have only one SDK left, one repository, and uh, we have only one branch developed. In total, we have six packages, four satellite packages, one conformance package, and one base package. And in this base package, there are all the, the code that was just used to be in, in, the, in the common repository like serialization and POCO. I sum here the, the, the namespaces that we, uh, that we use there. Uh, also about namespacing, we use still the same namespaces. We didn't change that. So if you're working with uh, a previous version of the SDK, um, upgrading to this R5 should not be so much problem because the namespaces are still the same. So how does that look like here in the diagram? So here we have this base, the 8075 base, which is a new package containing actually all the, the common packages like serialization and firepath and all these things, element definition, uh, not element types, I mean, um, it's all there. Um, then we have uh, a conformance package. Conformance package is actually only uh, needed by the R4, R4B and R5. And conformance packets containing the structure definition, element definition, value sets, and so on. So conformance resources. And we have um, the already existing um, uh, satellite packages, S23, R4, R4B, and R5. You notice that we don't have the specification packages anymore, the 807fire.specification packages. Well, we have them. But um, they are now meta packages. They're containing no code, but pointing to the, the correct um, satellite packages and also including the specification zip, um, which is residing in the specification data packages. So if you're using in previous version the dot specification, and you probably do, then with the new version, you will still get this correct specification zip and um, you would probably not change your code at all because of this meta package. We also took out the validator. The validator is not there anymore in the SDK. We took it out and we put it in a separate um, Git repository, legacy validation. Well, the name already give it away because we are building a new validator at the moment. And the new validator is much faster and it's more flexible. But we will still, for the time being, support this old validator. And um, just to prepare for the future, we took it out at the SDK for now. So if you're using validation in your code, you have to um, make a reference, a package reference to, to these packages. And um, it will still work the same because it's the same code. Also, we have Firely packages, Firely Fire packages. That's code that is working on Fire packages. That's also in its own repository and it's not part of the SDK. It uses SDK, but it's not part of it anymore. And we did more, not only restructuring, but also um, we integrated the latest version of the FHIR R5, uh, R5 definition snapshot 3, um, which was released in January or February this year. I think it was January. And um, yeah, we did that. So that's in our code as well. Um, also, um, the complete code of the FHIR client has been moved on the satellite to the base, and we have a very small sim, shim around it in the satellites. So when you use the fire client in SD3, for example, the code is completely, almost completely in base, uh, which is for us easier to maintain because we only have to maintain one uh, code base. So how does that look like in code? Yes, we are showing some code in this presentation. Well, we see here in blue the fire client, and the fire client is in the satellite. Um, the 
packages. So in S2.3, in R4, R4B, and R5, you will find a Fire client. And uh, you see it doesn't, do it doesn't have any body, and the body is moved has been moved to the base Fire client, which is in the base package. And we're just forwarding these parameters, and we inject a model inspector to the base Fire client. And a model inspector is an object that contains meta information about the fire resources and the types that the fire resources are using. The model inspector is dependent on the fire version, and so a model inspector for SQ3 is different than the model inspector for R4. Um, we inject this model inspector to the base fire client because the fire client should know how to serialize and deserialize the messages, um, and it needs some meta information doing so. If you're using a fire client in R4, you don't have to bother about this model inspector because we're already doing that for you. But if you're using a base fire client in a multi-fire version environment, then you have to know, and you know what you're doing, then you have to, then you have to inject your own model inspector yourself. Uh, we use this construction quite a lot in uh, the new code, uh, this construction of shimming actually, and uh, for example, in the directory source, in zip source, and some two JSON functions, for example. Much of the code is in the base package and in the thin layer stays in the satellite. Uh, that improves a lot in maintainability of the code. Yeah, and what is next on our agenda? What are we going to work on in the near future? Um, like I told you, we took out the validator out of the SDK repository and put it in a legacy repository, meaning that a new validation um, is coming out. We are working at it right now. Um, we are not quite done yet. We still have to do some uh, refining for, uh, for the new validator, but keep your eyes open on our release page because we will announcing it quite soon when we have it. Um, also for the Fire 5 release, we were working on the on refactoring the Fire client, um, but it did make it for the release. So um, it will be in a minor release, probably in 5.1 or something. We did a bit, um, uh, we did refactor a bit of the Fire client. We make it a bit more testability that you can already use. So you can use your, um, your mocking library for that uh, if you want to use with, uh, with, uh, with the Fire client in your testing unit, in the unit test, for example. Um, and what we are working on is that we uh, want to have our new serialization uh, serializers in the Fire Client. Uh, we still use the old ones. The new ones are much faster, and uh, we want we want to make it more flexible so they can you choose which you want which one you want to, to use. So keep an eye on our release page, and um, we will announce uh, we will we will announce it when we have it. Yeah, and that was the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for listening and watching. And um, yeah, here are some um, some nice URLs that you can uh, can visit. Um, uh, we documented our breaker changes from four to five quite in detail, so you can have a look at that. And uh, there is also a wiki page of the new structure that we are uh, that I was presenting today in this. Uh, in this presentation. So have a look at that as well. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you need some, if you have some questions, then go to the SDK uh, repository, uh, Git repository, and um, you can. Have, there's a discussion board there. Um, you can file in an issue if you want. If there is a bug or a feature that you want, please let us know. Always nice to hear something from the from the from the community. And um, yeah, and I would say happy coding. Thank you very much for listening, and bye bye.